Welcome to Central Community, and thank you so very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who's been giving to keep the doors open. We are so glad you're with us here this morning. We have the opportunity to worship together. The doors are open at 10 a.m. For those of you who are in Riverside and would like to be with us, may God richly bless your family as you join with us this morning. God bless you. <laughs> time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to work. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come, come. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for your love and goodness. We thank you for the opportunity to come to worship, no matter where we're at, God, right now. And we just ask you to be with us, guide us, protect us, be with our concerns and needs as we go through this day. Help us through the difficult times that we're facing as a family, as a person, as a church, or individuals, God. We know that you'll be there at every step of our journey today. We thank you for loving us and for the love that you bestowed to each person that's in this world today. And so, Father, uniquely use us to be able to share that love. And to be able to share that love, we have to have that love with inside of ourselves. And so, Father, we ask one more time as we come to worship that you'll apply your love and your grace and your mercy to our lives, that we can be forgiven of the mistakes that we've done from yesterday and move forward into today and knowing that you're here guiding, protecting, and giving us the strength to be able to handle whatever comes our way, God. And so we thank you for each person that is listening. We pray for them. We pray for their family and their friends, their situations in life. And God, we know that all of us, as we come to you, we know that you'll be there at every step of our journey today. And so God, thank you. 
Thank you for that love and that goodness. Be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will early seek the Savior. I will learn of him each day. I will follow where he leads me. I will walk the narrow way. For he loves me as he loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know. Oh, oh. Jesus loves me, died to save me, this is why I love him so. I will follow where he leads me, I am not too young to go. In the pathway where he leads me, not too young his will to know. For he loves me, yes, he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. He is standing at the doorway of escape from every sin. I will knock for he has promised he will hear and let me in for he loves me yes he loves me Jesus loves me this I know oh, oh, oh. Jesus loves me died to save me this is why I love him so Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. The 1990s were an exciting time around the church. We were building, we were advertising, the attendance of the church was growing exponentially. It was just a lot of fun. We were all a lot younger, for one thing. We were all 25 years younger, so there were a lot of exciting things going. Our kids were young. There were some dynamics that were changing. Then we started building in Mexico. We started building houses, and then we started building a church. It just occurred to me one day. I don't know why it had from the very beginning to think, we're a church. Why are we building houses? We should be building churches. And so in 2001, 20 years ago, this month, we were in the midst of putting the money together, putting all the construction materials together. Of, we had located property already. We were getting everything cleared, literally having a great big piece of dirt cleared off so that we could take a team down and build a church. It was probably among the most exciting things we'd ever done up until that point. That church is was a little tiny, tiny building. It, it wasn't much. We, I think literally, Pastor Ken could tell you, I think we just took two or three models of the houses we were building before and just kind of stretched it out, made it bigger, made it something more. We built a parsonage to go along with it. And we left it there, but we left it as a promise. We didn't want to build where there had ever been a church before. We had spent months looking for a community where there had never been a church. And then we went to work on building a church because we believed, just as we had found God in a church, that in a community that didn't have a church, they could receive the promise of God for them and maybe get that fresh start. Maybe you're at a spot in your life today where you need a fresh start. If there's one thing I've discovered, whether it's in those really exciting times when you seem to be having a great awakening in your life or in the life of your church or in the life of your business, whatever it is, or whether it's just in the depths of your being and things are starting to collapse and you need a fresh start, that listening to God 
And it doesn't mean that you're not accomplishing good things right now, but listening to God begins to change that because God is speaking and he wants to speak to each one of us. This morning I want to talk for a few minutes about the story of Noah. Again, theologically speaking, um, theologians will gather together, they'll debate over this point whether or not this was a great metaphor because all of the major religions basically have some sort of flood story. The Gilgamesh, all Sanskrit, you go to it and they have some sort of flood story within them. And so Noah, right about that same time, so whether there legitimately was some huge flood that was written about amongst in all the major religions, or whether this is a metaphor amongst humanity for what happens, we listen to God, it really doesn't matter, that part of it. And it shouldn't be a divisive point amongst you and your friends. When you allow that kind of theology that's thousands of years old for any of us, to think about, to somehow divide you from your friends, you don't know the answer to it. None of us will until we're with God together, and then we won't care about the answer. On this side of the throne, we should not be divided over these kinds of issues. But it said that God got frustrated with mankind. Read the sixth chapter of Genesis sometimes, and you'll see why, you'll see why those first two verses of the sixth chapter of Genesis, um, they're not verses that you ever memorized in Sunday school. They're verses that are the oddest and the strangest verses that no theologian can say, oh yeah, I know exactly what this is about. For all of us, what we begin to understand and discover is this, that God was at work, but it says God became frustrated with all of mankind. And this is what it says, so God said, I'm sorry I ever made them. I'm sorry I ever brought them into existence. I'm going to destroy them all. I'm going to bring up the waters from the earth. I'm going to bring down a mighty rain. And I'm going to flood the earth completely and kill all of men and women and children and animals, all of creation. I'm going to destroy them all. And then it says, and it's a beautiful verse, and it's repeated throughout the scriptures. It says, God remembered Noah. For Noah was a righteous man. Now you can go back to God remembered Rachel. God remembered Sarah. God remembered Joseph. God remembered David. God remembered Mordecai. Throughout the scriptures, God remembered. And God remembers you today. Regardless the heartbreak in your household right now, God remembers. And when God remembers us, God, it doesn't mean that up until that point that God had forgotten Noah. What it means is that up until that point, God, in the midst of looking at how humanity was going, it was easy to think, what a mistake I've made. If you were God, and you were looking at the world today, would you consider thinking, boy, this was a mistake. <laughs> if you were God and you were examining the divisions of humanity today, would you consider thinking, yeah, I need to wipe this out completely? Old Testament theolo theologians teach it this way. That's called anthropomorphizing God, and that's what they were doing. They were taking God and putting the thoughts of mankind onto God. The very earliest theologians were writing the scripture. They were saying, man, God must have felt so frustrated in wanting to destroy everything, in wanting to just take it out and crush it. So God chose Moa and said, Moa, or Moa, Noah, God chose Noah and said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. I want you to take all of your family together, this great boat, and he gave them the dimensions for it. I want you to make sure, to, and there's actually two versions of the story right back to back there. He said, I want you to take it, and I want you to bring in all the animals. I want you to bring all your family, and everyone else is going to be destroyed. And then all of them were locked in to this boat, and, you know, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And so we always assume that, you know, they were locked in there for 40 days and 40 nights. For the next 10 months after that, they waited. For a year, they were trapped 
in the, imagine being stuck in the biggest closet in your house with your dog. Imagine being stuck with all the dogs in the neighborhood. There's all the animals on the planet Earth, including the birds, including the snakes, including the lizards, everything, and then putting your family in with you. Would you survive that year? It makes the rain look like the easy time. And they waited and said, finally, Noah set out a raven. The raven flew around, came back. There was no land. Sent out a dove. The dove flew around, came back. There was no land. Sent out a dove again. The dove came back, had an olive branch. Land was starting to show. But it was still months until they were able to open the doors. And then we come to this point when finally God is getting ready to speak to him. And again, it says, God said to Noah and his sons, I'm going to make a solemn promise to you and to everyone who will live after you. Now remember, this is after the rainwaters have receded, after the waters that came up from the earth have receded. They're getting ready to start brand new with God, a fresh start. And which one of us doesn't want that fresh start where we've been crushed up until now, and now we can get this brand new beginning. I'm going to make a solemn promise to you and to everyone who will live after you. That's you and me. Everyone who lives after Noah. We're included in this promise. This includes the birds and the animals that came out of the boat. Think about that. God made a promise not just to you and me, but to all of creation, including the birds and the animals that came out of the boat. I promise every living creature that the earth and those living on it will never again be destroyed by a flood. The rainbow that I have put in the sky will be my sign to you and to every living creature on earth. It will remind you that I will keep this promise forever. When I send clouds over the earth and a rainbow appears in the sky, I will remember my promise to you and all the other living creatures. Never again will I let floodwaters destroy all of life. When I see the rainbow in the sky, I will always remember the promise that I have made to every living creature. The rainbow will be the sign of that solemn promise. What a gift this is to you and me. To know that when the storm clouds rage, to know that when the storm is pounded against us, to know that we are so down and everything's gone and all we've got ahead of us is a muddy life with no real sign of how we're going to get started, there is the promise of God that I am with you. I haven't forgotten you, and I'm never going to allow this to happen in your life again. I've given you this solemn promise. Jesus reiterated it with those famous words, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. I believe there are essential lessons for us when we want a fresh start on what it means to begin to listen to God. So this morning, if you have a card, you can go to our Facebook page at Central Community, or you can make sure that you download that card. You can follow it along on your phone. You can look at it so that you can fill in the blanks in your life. But it says when we need a fresh start, and there are three points I want to cover this morning. The fresh start we need is ours. First of all, when, that when we remember that God is for us, when it feels like the sky is falling. When it feels like the sky is falling all around you, remember that God is for us. This year has been a hard year for so many of us. We've watched this week on television as they're burning bodies in India from the number of people that are being killed, but it's not all far away. We got a telephone call yesterday from friends from right here in their church whose son, who grew up at Central Community, was murdered yesterday morning. Heartbreak happens everywhere. To people we know, to people we love. Heartbreak happens in our households, in our lives. Not in a way that just for illustration purposes, but in a way that makes us cry out. And makes us think of people we love in those moments. God is for us when it feels like the sky is falling, and that's when we need to be listening. God says, I promise every living creature that the earth and those living on it will never again 
be destroyed by a flood. Pearl Bailey said this, people see God every day, they just don't recognize him. For you and me, we look at a world filled with God and we just don't recognize God. God all around us, God working in our midst, God for us, because we built that little church. We went and for the next two years, we built houses again, but in 2003, listening to God, God spoke to me. And we began to learn, and I said, next year we're going to build a children's home. And in 2004, 17 years ago, we built Siempre para los Niños. That's been such an essential element of our ministry here at Central Community, and maybe in your ministry at your church, and has reached across the nation and around the world as people have come and been missionaries and ministers there, as people have stayed and brought work groups from their churches, as we've opened the doors, and, and we are so excited to open the doors again in the weeks to come. We can't wait until everyone is vaccinated. We can't wait until the pandemic is over so that you can come and be a part of what's happening at Siempre para los Niños. Because over and over and over, we got to welcome little children in. In 2005, we welcomed a little boy named Fabian. Maybe you remember Fabian if you ever came to our work. Fabian was filled with life. Always this great big smile, always joyous, and always a reason to go. When I, people ask me, how in the world have you gone for 17 years? every Wednesday to Siempre para los Niños, through the cartel violence, through the drugs happening down there, through the killings during a pandemic. How have you kept on going? You know, it's kids like Fabian, those smiles, great smiles, and thinking that they're kids who someone needed help. In that moment, a parent, a mom, or dad couldn't get them through that time. They re released them into our care. Or maybe they were true orphans or maybe just legitimately dumped at our doorstep and abandoned. And we had the opportunity to love them. They didn't know who they would find long-term strength in. And in those first weeks of Siempre Parlos Niños, not the first months or years, but in the first weeks, I realized they needed to have that ongoing promise. You see, God knew that you and me would need a promise because we would forget, we would stop listening. And we need to understand that when our sky is falling, when our family is shattered, that God is for us. He is not against you. He promised Noah so long ago. God is all around you, and it's our job just to learn how to recognize him. Second, the fresh start we need is ours when we know that cloudy days precede rainbows and are part of life. It doesn't say that cloudy days are easy. Now, some of you may love the rain. Some of you may say, oh, I love cloudy days. But if it were cloudy every day for 40 days, you wouldn't love it for long. If it were cloudy every day and raining, but metaphorically speaking, which may be what the story is about, is telling us that the hardships of life came down until they drowned it out everyone and all of life was killed. Imagine the fear it would strike into the heart of Noah's family every single time the clouds came over. They would think, is this going to happen again? Is it ever going to stop raining? Is everything going to be destroyed all over again? And so God told them cloudy days are going to happen. He says, when I send clouds over the earth. God doesn't say, don't worry, I'm never sending a cloud again. God doesn't say, okay, the flood is over, and I'm never sending one more cloud. Instead, what God speaks clearly, he says, when cloudy days happen, for you and me to understand that the fresh start that we need is ours when we know that cloudy days are just ahead of rainbows. You can't have the rainbow and the reminder of the promise of God without the cloudy day. And for us, when we get through our cloudy days, understanding that there's a rainbow and a reminder of the promise on just the other side of it, we can get through it. 
Has everything been per per perfect since we started working in Mexico? <laughs> Not even a little bit. Did a lot of people tell us never to start working in Mexico? Absolutely. Our national church boards, our local church affiliation, they all told us not to work in Mexico. In fact, if you were to call them today, national church boards, our local affiliation, because pastors have called me and told them they did, and asked them, do you have any work in Mexico? They'll say no. They won't even acknowledge the work that we do in Mexico. Because they were opposed to us going down and working and doing the things that we're doing. Not that they were opposed to good things happening. They were opposed to the corruption, and they were opposed to the crime that went on down there. And so they had already pulled out the money that they had spent. And for us, we went down understanding we were taking a risk, and we didn't know how long it would last. That's why I keep pictures like the second one of Fabian in 2011. I love it. Fabian's just about getting to the size where he could lift me up. And I love the fact that I've got short hair and the pictures and all that kind of stuff, and I'm a skinny, younger version of me. But Fabian now six years older. Fabian now about 11 years old, smiling and growing. I think about it, he had those six years because there was the promise and there was the treasure of siempre. There was a promise of people who from the very beginning, back in 2001, 20 years ago, when we built a church, they committed to that little colonia. And in 2003, when we promised next year, we're going to build an orphanage. We didn't know what we would name the orphanage. We didn't know how in the middle of the night one night, I had a dream, and I'm not much of a mystic. I struggle with even believing in mysticism. But in the night, there was a word that came to me, siempre. It was like I could see it in front of myself. I keep a notepad next to my bed, I always have, just in case I come up with an idea during the night for a message or a sermon or whatever happens. I leaned over to my notepad and I wrote the word down, siempre. Didn't even know what it meant. I now know that it comes from the Latin semper, like semper fi. I went in and I Googled it the next morning when I saw it on the pad. Siempre, it means always, it's Spanish. And I thought, that's what we'll call the orphanage. Siempre para los niños. Always for the children. They will always be able to be there, whether they're dropped off. And I've got a picture of Fabian's first day standing beneath our little sign that says Siempre para los niños cute little picture. I looked at it yesterday of him when he was just standing there in his very first day. And then I love that picture of me holding him in 2005 even more. And then in 2011, thinking the years that that span in his life as the promise. How many years has God been faithful to you? How many years has God held on to you? How many times when the clouds rolled in, but then rolled away and you forgot about God being faithful and you stopped listening? And you thought, boy, was I lucky to get past that. And you thought to yourself, boy, was I smart to push through those times. You thought to yourself, boy, did I work hard. As opposed to getting on your knees and saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for keeping your promises. When the clouds rolled in, help me to see the rainbow around myself today. I love what Abraham Lincoln said. He said, sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. See, we don't need to worry about if God is on our side. God is always on the side of creation. Has been from the beginning. He promised it and reiterated it with a rainbow. He restored it with the resurrection of his only son, Christ Jesus. And he is on our side today, reiterating it around the world as the gospel message is being lifted up. And for you and me to say, I want to be listening. I don't want to turn away and leave the promise of God aside.
but instead, I want to be listening to God because God has a great purpose, but just not a great purpose for your life because that's one of those trite and true sayings. But a great purpose without a great passion is only problematic for us. You're struggling away and you just become a worker bee with a great purpose without a great passion. Because purpose and passion from God go hand in hand. And they're anchored in the promise of God. I'm going to take you through every cloudy day. And cloudy days are going to be out there. And for us to say, we want to work through that time. And so third, when we need a fresh start, we're not lost. And you need to understand that just because you're someplace today and the floor has fallen out from your life and things aren't going the way you want, it doesn't mean that you're lost. We're not lost. We're just listening. And we need to understand that God is speaking. And when it feels like we're lost, if we remember to listen, God, what do you want to do in my life today? What do you want to do now? It says, God says, now imagine God, the God of all creation, speaking to Noah and his family, who didn't exactly go the right direction in everything they said in four. Go ahead and read the story. It says, I will always remember the promise that I have made to every living creature. I will always, you know what, if that was translated from the Spanish, I will siempre, I will always remember the promise that I have made to every living creature. Final picture of Fabian, and I just got this week. Fabian and I are friends on Facebook. A few months back, he asked to be my friend on Facebook. Through some divisions, at the orphanage across the years. 2016 or so, Fabian stopped living with us at Siempre. And this is my newest picture of him. Fabian, now a dad. Fabian, there he is with his son just this week, holding him all the way from that promise of a little boy abandoned on our doorstep in 2005 to the promise of a father celebrating his son in 2021. And that's just because the people of a church kept a promise. That's just because the people of those who believed in Siempre para los Niños, those who believed in the little church we built 20 years ago in 2001, those who believed in the work of Central Community, they kept their promise. Imagine how much more so when God keeps his promise. God keeps his promises. And through his promises, he gives birth for each one of us. I will always remember the promise that I have made to every living creature. Are you listening to God today? Because when you listen to God, you're painting a picture of your future. In 2001, we, when we built that little church, we had no idea that in 2004 we would be building a children's home. And in 2004, when we built that children's home, we had no idea that just months later, Fabian would be coming in. And when Fabian came in a little bo as a little boy, and we remained faithful to making sure that he could go to school, making sure he had food on the table, making sure he had a bed, making sure he had a home, we had no idea that he would grow up and someday be a father in 2021. But by being faithful and listening through that time, we had the opportunity to paint a picture of our future and of Fabian's future as well, and the future for his son. What kind of future are you painting today for the people around you? Are you listening to God, or are you listening to all the wrong voices? See, when we begin to listen to God, at the core of our being, we paint a future that when the year 20 years from now, 2000, 41 rolls around and Fabian's little boy is 20 years old and Fabian's in his 40s. It's a whole, I'm 86 or 87, you know, it's a whole different existence. We're constantly painting the future and you can paint that future with your own purpose and with your own plans 
where you can paint that future with a passion to live out the purpose of God by listening and getting a fresh start. If you need a fresh start this morning, I want you to know that we're here to pray for you and we want to help because we know what it's like to need a fresh start, not just before we went to church and not just before we were Christians, but since we started going to church and since we became Christians and even for me since I was in the ministry, all of us need those moments of a fresh start. So there's a simple prayer at the bottom of your card. It says this, help me remember you and listen when I feel forgotten. My life has been about me and mine. Give me purpose and passion to carry with your promise. I will listen and obey. Heavenly Father, we can't begin to imagine the future any more than any of us when we built that little church down in that little colonia in 2000. In three or 2001, we could have imagined Fabian happy and healthy with a little boy in 2021. We thank you for these years of protection that you've given, and we would ask that you would protect Fabian, that you would protect his son, that you would protect the wider family of Siempre para los Niños. We would ask the greatest blessings on everyone who's given, on everyone who's built, and we would ask the blessings of promise on the children of Siempre today on all those who are still growing, the workers and the staff, God. We would ask your greatest blessings on Central Community that you would continue to give us a passion and a purpose to trust your promise and all we say and do. And for that one who needs a fresh start today, God, for that one who's felt like their life has been nothing but rain clouds and they haven't heard your voice, they haven't been able to see you, God, and they haven't felt like they've had the direction that they've needed. I would ask right now, Holy Spirit, that you would move in that household where one is alone and listening. I would ask that you would move in that family where there are two or three together, God, in your name and viewing on their television. I would ask for that one who just stumbled across this on their computer this morning and for those across the nation who have been a part of Siempre para los Niños, who've held Fabian since he was a little boy and prayed for him as he grew up, God, that you would protect them, Father, and most of all for each one of us who need a fresh start today, who cry out just to long to begin again. I would ask that whether we're in our 80s or 70s or 60s or 50s or 40s or 30s or 20s or teenagers, God, wherever that we could again Receive your promise, God, that you have placed a rainbow out ahead of us, that you will not be here to destroy us, but that you're here to lift us up, God, and to carry us into a future that you've painted and planned for us. If only we would trust you, God, for that one who needs you in their heart personally as their Lord and Savior. And right now, Holy Spirit, you're speaking to them and they don't understand what's going on. I would ask that they would open up their hearts, that they would say yes, and Lord Jesus, that you would come in and help them take those first steps in passion to a new purpose, God, to live out your promise starting today. I would ask your protection over every single household represented here today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of Central Community Day. What an incredible time in the life of our ministries. If you're not a part of Central Community, I would invite you to be a part. I would invite you to join our membership wherever you're at around the world. I would invite you to say yes to God, to say yes to the good things we're doing. Tonight we'll be on the streets of Los Angeles. We'll be down on Skid Row. Soon you'll be able to get in the van with us again. Next month we're going to be cooking dinners again and taking full dinners down onto the corners of the streets. You are invited to be a part of that. You can come out this afternoon as soon as 12.30. Jody will be over there. They're making ham and cheese sandwiches to go to the streets tonight. We'll be giving them out on Skid Row tonight down into the bottom of the streets as we get ready to step back onto the corner of 3rd and Main. If you're down on Skid Row right now and you're listening, we'll be at the corner of 3rd and Main at 5 o'clock tonight. We'll be down 
in front of the LA mission, or midnight mission, I'm sorry, around 5.15, you're invited to meet us there. I'd sure like to see you. Um, you can be a part of that. Thank you for those who have been a part of Jack for Jesus across the years. Tuesday morning, we have a food pickup at 10.20 this week um, from Feeding America. Praise God for Feeding America. It's been such a help to our ministries. We'll be giving out food. I think we have got literally already a couple tons of food here on the campus. We've got a few thousand pounds more to hand out. Last week, this, this is the truth, last Wednesday we handed out 12,000 pounds of food Wednesday morning on our food giveaway. Thank you for those of you who have been coming in Tuesday afternoons and packing. Thank you for those of you who have been picking up and helping so that we can make sure it's ready. Um, if you need food support, be here Wednesday morning between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning and we'll have food for you. I want you to know the line starts actually about 6.30 or something like that. If you want to be at the front of the line, you'll need to be here much earlier than 8. But you are welcome to be a part of that, to come and get food. If you would like to be a part of our food giveaway, come on out and be a part of that. It has been such a blessing during the pandemic for the entire neighborhood. Last week, I think we served over 900 people. Their needs were met because of this, and there were that many meals that were not missed because of those of you who have supported this. Thank you so much. For those of you who tithe and support and give your tithes, offerings and commitments to our ministry, may God richly bless you and your household. Um, soon we'll be open all the way around. Next month we're going into full reopening. You're invited to be a part of that. God, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. If your mom is alive, make sure to be with her at church at our 10 a.m. service next Sunday if you're here in Riverside. If you're someplace else and you have a living mother, I wish my mom was alive just so I could be around her and hug her and do those kind of things. Do that, and you can go to feedingamericaie.org, and they're having a food giveaway on Friday, this coming Friday, where you can go and drive through, and they have a special gift for every mom. Pretty sure it's a ham. So if you want to get a free ham for your dinner on Sunday, you can do that. God bless you. Thanks so much for being a part. And oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the Happy day, happy day.